Welcome to our September 27th, 2020 worship service, which is the 17th Sunday after Pentecost. And I invite you to get your Holy Communion elements ready for later in the service. And Mike, you have some things for us. Yeah. <laughs> We're running technical glitches, and we won't even tell the populace what we've been going through here. But <laughs> we have a new web streaming recording computer in place, and it's newer and faster, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to get too technical on it. It's just newer than the old one. The old one was having issues, and hopefully this will uh, give us a good recording and a good upload for our services. Uh, just a little hint, we're on take two right now, folks, so <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we've got all the bugs worked out and we can continue oh. to move forward. Yep. So, okay. I, I hear that Ponells are in northern Minnesota, and I'm going to take me off here and I'm going to bring up the computer. Whoops. Well, let's take it off picture. Yeah, you got to take me off too. Yeah, right? we'll take you yeah. off too. I... Basically, Ponells are in northern Minnesota. They sent me some pictures in, so we thought we would share those with them. Looks like the fall colors are coming out where they're at. And uh, it looks like they went on some sort of drive, or maybe they're on an ATV out in the countryside. It's like a small pond there by a pastor, and just some trees changing colors. You know how beautiful northern Minnesota yeah. can be. So we thank them for sharing those photos with us and uh, including us on their vacation. Speaking of vacations, you're going on a vacation, right? Yeah, and I'm hoping to see how the fall colors out are, on, are in the hills, and I'm hoping the smoke gets blown away by our oh. big wind that's coming up. So. Well, I, my phone got an alert today, speaking of... Uh, I guess there's a fire alert in our county right now because of dry conditions. Okay. Um, so people nah. are, you know, the county has called out probably a burn, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't have my phone in front of me to tell me exactly what it says, but I did get an alert. So yeah, the be heart. careful, folks, if you're uh, having little fires in your backyard or even uh, burning yeah. something in the country. Yeah, having harvesting fires are really dangerous yeah, now when I it's this dry. I suppose the cornfield is starting to dry out, too, yep. for harvest. Yeah, Yeah, we had a time in Warner when they evacuated the side of, side of town that we lived in because of a combine fire that had started <laughs> in the cornfield. So it's scary. <laughs> well, uh, folks, with the new computer that we have put in place, and because the pastor's going on vacation and we're recording both services for this week and next week ahead of time, yep. we're so, probably going to skip playing the music in these two yep. recorded services. And so I'll, I'll plan to at least read a couple of verses of yeah. each hymn. So and I, an I want to make sure that we're still operating and recording. Yeah, for sure. I don't I, the, the first take that we did, it, it was great. We were having a good service. You would have really enjoyed it, except there, <laughs> there was no audio. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah, it's good to see. We, we no were audio. like, we were just a bunch of mimes moving our yeah, mouths. Right, right. <laughs> So okay, is. Pastor, I'll let you get at it. And have a great, uh, enjoy the service, folks. Well, in our caring conversations from taking faith home to try to get our mind on worship, um, it asks, do you ask for help sometimes when making decisions? Why or why not? Or is there a time when you ask God for God's help in making a decision? If so, tell, talk about it. How does reading the Bible and having conversation with other believers help guide your life? And that's one of the things with Bible study, we can do that. And, it, and the give and take that goes. And I just want to encourage you, if something that you hear about in the service, you have a question about or want to talk about, please feel free to call me and, and we can chat about it. Or you can come in and we can make an appointment to talk about it too. And of course, with the social distancing and everything, we'll do our best. So we begin our service with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. 
Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Help us to be humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life through you, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The good news for us, God hears the cries of all who cry out in need. Through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Our gathering hymn is Morning Has Broken. In the first and third verses, I will read for us. Morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing, praise for the morning. Praise for them springing fresh from the word. Mine is the sunlight, mine is the morning. Born of the one light, Eden saw play. Praise with elation. Praise every morning. Praise God's recreation of the new day. And as we are in the new day, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us. Amen. Let us pray. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now Sharon Jones will be reading our lessons and psalm for us today. First reading today is from Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 1 through 4 and 25 through 32. An introduction. Ezekiel challenges those who think they cannot change because of what their parents were and did, or who think they cannot reverse their own previous behavior. God insistently invites people to turn and live. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel. The parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed, they shall surely live, they shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions, otherwise iniquity will be your ruin. 
Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. Our psalm is number Psalm 25, verses 1 through 9. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. Our second reading is from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. An introduction. As part of a call for harmony rather than self-seeking, Paul uses a very early Christian hymn that extols the selflessness of Christ in his obedient death on the cross. Christ's selfless perspective is to be the essential perspective we share as the foundation for Christian accord. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy. Make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our gospel for today is a reading from the 21st chapter of the gospel according to St. Matthew. An introduction has to do with after driving the money changers out of the temple. Jesus begins teaching in the temple. His authority is questioned by the religious leaders who are supposed to be the ones in charge of the temple. St. Matthew writes, when Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, 
by what authority are you doing these things and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? They argued with each other. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe in him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we don't know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. Then Jesus said, what do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. And the son answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And that second son said, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? Well, they said the first. Jesus said to them, Truly, I tell you that tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness. You did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, I'm going to be preaching on the second reading from Philippians 2. And as you just, as I just read from the gospel, Jesus is being confronted with the idea of his authority. Well, how do we get authority? Authority is basically given to us by other people, isn't it? And so then the one in authority is to have be a good example for others. In the second chapter of Philippians, Paul cites the first hymn about Jesus. And it talks about him being humble, or him being coming to earth humble. And we what is humility? What is being humble? And we put when we're humble. We're putting others first and giving them what we think we deserve. Well, I'm going to use, I'm going to use this. This may be a very weak example of what Jesus did, but it talks about Jesus emptying himself and becoming obedient unto death. Okay, I have this. I've got a bunch of tennis balls in here. Okay. Jesus being humble. Think of these ten tennis balls as being God. Okay? So these, this is the example of God for us. And what Jesus, by being human, becoming human, throws out all of that godliness to take on this frail human body that we have. And so by being coming humble, Jesus emptied himself for our good. And so if Jesus made himself one of us, made himself nothing as far as godliness is concerned, how can we carry out that in our human lives? Basically, by if we have something that we know somebody else really needs, but we really like it, but we know that that other person could use it more than we can. So we give it to them. And so as young people, we can put, our, put other people first that are in so much need because we have the example of Jesus doing that very thing for us. And so that is with humility that we come in front of Jesus and we want to do the best for those who are in our midst. So that is what I have for you today. Thank you.
And now I know before the second video, we're going to have to take care of those tennis balls too, aren't we? But anyhow, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Okay, with that, our God, being in that particular way, how do we show humility? And how do we deal with this God that we have? And I am going to talk today about worship. Worship is the response from our heart to the God who is worthy of our honor as we come into God's presence. And Paul talks about it in the sense of fear and trembling. It's not the kind of fear and trembling where we're going to hide underneath something so that we, we know that God's going to show some kind of anger at us or something. But no, it's in the sense of awe and respect. That's how we are called to worship our God. The word worship actually comes from an old Anglo-Saxon word that means worth-ship. Worship is what you and I do. It is our turning from the today of life to the uh, life in the eternal. It is when we are caught up, we get outside of ourselves to the presence of God, and we are helped by God's faithfulness and love. And that faithfulness in love helps us to see how to be humble to one another. Worship is our offering. It's ultimately an offering of ourselves in, the, in trust of God. God is who we do worship for. To lead into the Ten Commandments, before the first commandment, God says, I am the Lord your God. And so it's in trust that we come to this Lord our God. And then it goes into the first commandment. How is you shall have no other gods before me. And Luther says we are to fear, love, and trust God above anything else. This is God's hope that we will not bow to what is less than God those things that will leave us stranded and make us feel betrayed. The first commandment before us asks, how big is your God? Is your God big enough to guide the planets and at the same time touch this earth with beautiful wildflowers? Is your God a surprising God that will meet you in what are the ordinary things of life, like the crosses that are made from electrical poles? I know we don't have that many of them anymore, do we? But yet we have the big transformers and everything. Okay, the cross is made by that. And also the majestic sunset and the bright light of the big full moon at night. Our God, how big is our God? God creates an extra moment of realizing how much love and grace he has for us. Is your God a companion in real life that can cleanse and forgive the ugliness of sin and anger by a surprising song or piece of music? St. Paul's God is so large that eternity cannot hold God. In this Philippians passage, God emptied himself of all this holiness to become a true human being. This is a song of praise declaring that our God is worthy of worship because God's love cannot be held from us. Whenever worship happens, it is a response from inside of each of us. Sometimes it's a heartfelt response, and sometimes it just comes out of, of, out of discipline, acknowledging that we know who God is. We may not feel like it, but we do it because we need to. Yes, worship is about you and your relationship to God as your personal Savior. 
but it does not stop with God as our personal Savior. Worship is about all of us also as the body of Christ. The Bible tells us that personal worship mostly reflects, most frequently springs out of our experience of worship in a church building. And that's what we've been most used to, right? Long ago I heard this, I don't need the church to be a Christian, but I need the church to remain one. Here is where we hear of the God who alone is God. This is where we are connected most clearly to Jesus, who is the life-giving love of God. Our experience of worship together will hopefully shape our experience of worship in those times of awe and in also our times of need. If worship is only a duty for us, we just don't get it. Worship needs to become a habit first in so many ways, right? So we regularly start doing it. Worship is the doorway to God's real presence for us. And it comes within us and through us as the church. The church, we've heard, leaves the building. That's when we leave this church. And the Holy Spirit then takes us into this experiencing of worship into the real realities of life, the real life where we show others the God that we worship, the God that we believe in. The Holy Spirit will take those remarkable moments of God's presence and use them to make our worship together personal and meaningful. Paul then tells us that worship becomes action. If we pay attention to the world around us, worship can change the way we see the world and how we respond to those others. Worship is living out our faith. St. Paul continues by saying, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. God does not just meet us in worship, but God, through the Holy Spirit, enters into our lives. And God will empower us to be part of God's active love and truth for our world. Worship is never intended to stay behind the church walls. Yes, this building, when we can be in it, we see it as a holy place that's set apart for worship. But having been here in the presence of God, we take that with us wherever we go, wherever and to whatever happens to us. As we are so steeped in this pandemic crisis, we find that we realize that the Holy Spirit works through the means of the electronic media, and we are constantly seeking those new ways that we can help one another realize that our God is indeed beyond a building, helping us to relate, to reach out. My prayer is that all of us will be surprised by the presence of God, who is working through the Holy Spirit in new and different ways, whether it be in our family, life beyond our houses, at work, at play, especially in those moments that we are so caught up in anxiety and concern through this pandemic crisis. God's blessings rest with you as we realize those new ways to worship. Amen. Our hymn of the day is Lord whose love and humble service and the first and the last verses I will read for us. Lord whose love and humble service bore the weight of human need, who upon the cross forsaken worked your mercy's perfect deed. We, your servants, bring the worship, not of voice alone but heart, consecrating to your purpose every gift which you impart. Called by worship to your service, 
Forth in your dear name we go, to the child, the youth, the aged, love in loving deeds to show, hope and health, goodwill and comfort, counsel, aid and peace we give, that your servants, Lord, in freedom, may your mercy know and live. And now, as we continue our service, we will be confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed, and I invite you to join with me as you are able. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And I'm going to um, be going into our prayer of the church for today, and I apologize that the Judy Beck family was left off of our prayer request. Please do remember Ron in your prayers as, as he goes through this time of transition. Friends, as we are drawn together in the compassion of our God, we now pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord God, in all the world, we pray that you will give us all unity. Inspire all of us who are baptized into the mind of Christ, where the church is powerful and where it struggles. Shape us with humility and obedience so that your love may be at work in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your Son, Jesus Christ, took on all of the bodily life of our world, even to death. Preserve and keep your creation, O God. Mend and redeem places that are polluted and damaged, so that all of creation confesses you as Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, turn the nations toward life, where our ways are unfair. Give us new hearts and new spirits where sin permeates our cultures and institutions. Change our minds. Teach us to trust your authority. And Lord, we lift up our military personnel. We pray that you be with them and help them as they do those things that they are called upon to do. Help them, lead them, guide them in all your ways. We especially lift up those we know of Michael, Sean, Dane, and Gabe, we pray that you will uphold, lead, and guide them as they do their tasks in your name for our country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our lives are yours, O Lord. Relieve the suffering of all who are ill and in need of your healing hand. We lift up Kathy and Norma, Ron, who will soon be having surgery. We continue to pray for Pastor Zachariah in India, Deb, Donna, Judy, Jerry, Betsy, Randy, Patricia, Dorothy, Mildred, Judy, Florence, Dan, Lila, Jordan, Marianne, Dee, Aurora, Dwayne, Mackenzie and all we now name silently before you in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this congregation, our Savior's Lutheran Church. Be with those in our postcard ministry, Bill Schult and Betty Sievertson. Be with us as we work together to be your representatives in the Huron community and beyond. Turn us away from our own self-interest toward the interests of others. 
Fill us with your compassion and sympathy. Bless the ministries of care in our Huron community. Make us to be signs of your mercy and justice for all of our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, at this time, we lift up the family of Judy Beck. We pray that you will comfort them with the assurance of your caring love and surround us with your compassion as they walk through these challenging times without her being with them to help them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see we need, need Lord Jesus. We, thank, we lift up to you. We entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. We pray. Amen. Now I invite you to pass the peace of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Share the peace of the Lord with those in your family at this time. And now we remember that night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Please take your bread. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Then in the same manner also, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, In this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. Take your cup, take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve us in true faith and a life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. Mother in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. And we now go into our announcements for the day. And I've been, um, the email was sent through the Ministerial Association because we're having widespread outbreaks of the COVID virus. And so, as we have been doing, churches are encouraged to continue to keep up doing what we have been doing with the masking and the social distancing and the, the using the hand sanitizer because of that. So it's the car, um, Wayne Carr, I think it is, is the one that kind of is the one that disseminating that information. Beetle, Beetle County COVID. Pardon? Yeah, he's with Be Beetle County COVID. He's on the Beetle That's, County COVID okay. Commission. Okay, okay. So. so we've been as a church encouraged to do that. And Dr. Fauci tells us, we are not to be at war with one another. We are to be consolidated at war with this virus. The virus is the enemy, not each other. So I want to highlight that at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you know, and, and our rates, it, it, not, not just in Beale County, but statewide, have been going up and up and up. 
You know, mm -hmm. we had two of the highest days, well into the 400s. Now, I heard it was 20 yesterday. Yeah, I don't know what today's was for Beetle County, but statewide today, I think we were well into the 500s of positive oh, man. cases, which wow. is, is probably the highest single day total that yep. we've had. For sure. Uh, by all accounts, e even though uh, there's been some misinformation back and forth when it comes to hospitals, okay. but I think hospitals are saying, you need to be careful because we Yep. We yeah, might we don't, not be able to handle you. Yeah, so. we don't want to overload them, that's yeah, for sure. It's not just uh, it's not just COVID cases they're dealing with. I mean, they're, they're dealing with people who have had heart attacks and cancer well, and, and all those yeah. other things. And well, so. I understand Earl Heinricher was tested for that, and he ended up being also tested for West Nile, and he has West Nile. He has West Nile. Nile. Yeah, so that's somewhat out there too, so be cautious. And I know they've yeah. started with the influenza shots for the year too, so. Yeah, wear, wear your mask, you know. I, I yeah. wear my mask when I'm around pastor. I wear my yeah, mask and you, when I'm you're around not, my you, mom. You've been working so hard, you haven't, wor haven't brought us your... Uh... No, I don't have the funky <laughs> masks this week. But, but I did you're... wear it. I had to work a cheerleading tournament this week from a oh. distance. I was socially distanced, and I had protective barriers around okay. me. And okay. uh, when the Tigers performed, I put on that, that LED uh, mask. And go it said, Tigers. Go, go Tigers on it. <laughs> Great. So yep. I, I was representing. Yeah. Well, I wanted to say something to you also about noisy offerings. Um, if you have cash that you would like to give to the noisy offerings, if you just want to drop it off to at the church, um, put it in that mailbox that's outside the northeast door where the mail is disposed. Um, you can do that, and we'll be sure it gets goes to the Catherine um, Larson Orphanage. So, And if you come to live worship, you can bring it then, and we'll be sure it gets there. Um, planning to have Bible study this week. But I am not going to be, um, this uh, starting to, uh, this Monday, I'm not going to be doing a YouTube devotional. I won't pick up on that until um, October 6th, Tuesday, October 6th. And I will start my vacation this coming Wednesday. So um, I will be around for Bible study on Tuesday. Pastor Gary Anderson is going to be here for live service next Sunday. So, so you can come in and worship with him on that day, and we may be full to overflowing. Uh, <laughs> we'll I, I, I'm sorry I was laughing when you said you wouldn't be doing a YouTube, but it, it's funny, folks, every morning uh, at about 7 a.m., maybe a quarter to 7, my <laughs> iPad and my phone <laughs> both go, bing, <laughs> and they wake me up. And it's the pastor telling me <laughs> with a text that the message has been uploaded for the day. And yeah. I'm wondering how I'm going to wake up the next couple of weeks. Well, you had started sending stuff off at that time in the morning because others were waking you up. So that's why I decided to uh, well, do it I, that way. I, I started sending them right away in the morning this past week because I've been so bad at sending them. I, I get so busy <laughs> later in the day. Well, we'll have to try to get you going again on October 6th. <laughs> <laughs> uh, trying to trying to help in ways that we can, and I'm afraid that Sunday school is going to be kind of on hiatus. Um, I'm not sure. I'll be next Sunday. It won't be as long as I'm here. I'll plan to do something with ever whatever children are here for Sunday school. But um, Jake isn't coming, and Jolene is not going to be able to do it now for a while until at least after the baby is born. So please um, bring your children, and I will do what I can, but I don't think, I'm not going to expect Pastor Gary to do it. I don't know. But we'll try to do something during children's sermons that will be helpful. So we'll kind of go that way for now until hopefully, I don't know, with, with the counts going up, we may have to... Um, just do live stream worship, but we'll continue on doing what we can. With that, um, I don't have anything at this point. If we do end up stopping live worship, you will be contacted. And we'll leave it at that. With that kind of a high count, we'll have to just do what we can and pray that we stay safe. With that, 
I will read the uh, first and last verses of Go My Children With My Blessing. Go my children with my blessing, never alone. Waking, sleeping, I am with you. You are my own. In my love's baptismal river, I have made you mine forever. Go, my children, with my blessing. You are my own. Go, my children, fed and nourished, closer to me. Grow in love and love by serving, joyful and free. Here my spirit power filled you. Here my tender comfort stilled you. Go, my children, fed and nourished, joyful and free. Dear children, go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God.